Inspired by the life of the savvy and ambitious Colombian businesswoman Griselda Blanco comes a new Netflix original limited series. Griselda tells the story of a devoted mother who, with her lethal blend of charm and relentless savagery, creates one of the most powerful cartels in history. Witness Sofia Vergara's captivating transformation into the godmother of the underworld. Griselda, now streaming only on Netflix. This episode is brought to you by FX's Feud, Capote vs. the Swans. Inspired by actual events, the series tells the story of Truman Capote and the women he betrayed. The original housewives, they were society's most elite women. Rich, glamorous socialites who defined a bygone era of high society New York. From creator Ryan Murphy, this drama series features an all-star cast, including Naomi Watts, Demi Moore, and Diane Lane. FX's Feud premieres January 31st on FX Stream on Hulu. Welcome to the Bare Naked ABCs, where we are reviewing all the songs by Bare Naked Ladies, not just the ones that came out on polycarbonate petroleum products covered in aluminum or gold. Sometimes it's on vinyl or polyester film tape covered with magnetized ferric oxide. And speaking of magnetic, we have someone with a magnetic personality back this week. Welcome back, Aaron. Yay! Oh, I thought you were going with Michelle on that one. (laughs) (laughs) Stop. And speaking of the gold standard, we have our usual co-host, Michelle. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that works for me. Hey. I can take that. Golf club. <laughs> and this week, we are talking about that wonderful song, Duck Tape Heart. Stop messing with my duck tape heart. Your best will make you fall apart. Because I'll always have enough, enough. For when I gotta tape it up, it up. Stop. This song was written by Ed and Kevin Griffin from Better Than Ezra. Mm. But a better question is, what album was it from? So, Tracy, I sealed myself off from reality of, of what was going on, and I made sure that I, I didn't Google or anything. I just made sure to listen to the MP3s that you sent so that I could make sure that I was not uh, tainted in any way or spoiled. And I waffled back and forth for a while. This was a tough one. Initially, I was thinking Grinning Streak, but... I'm going to go with, because I think we've only heard one song from this album thus far. Uh, and I don't know it so well. And that might be why this is a little bit of an unfamiliar sound to me. This is definitely Latter Day, clearly Latter Day b This is 100% Ed all over it. Um, and the electronic drums and the synth had me thinking Latter Day b So I don't think this is fake nudes. And I thought maybe it was Grinning Streak, but I'm going to go Silver Ball. Wow! Am I, how close am I? Did I? Did I get it? Good job! Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm surprised because I heard somebody badmouth Silverball, and I like this song. <laughs> I also would have given you credit, Aaron, if you had said BNL Red Rocks. That was pretty recent. BNL yeah. Rocks Red Rock, which was the live album, but it was a bit of a giveaway because I did give you that when I sent it to you this uh, week. They did have it live, yeah, that's true. I heard the live version; it was good. Yeah, that would have been a little bit of a cheat because I, I figured it said, and then I think the the file said Red Rocks. So I was like, okay. Well, now this is the second clearly. single from the CD. It was following "Say What You Want." We won't cover for another decade or so. I'll be in the retirement home by then. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second song in a row from Red Rocks. Yes, indeed, it is. Now, after Kevin Griffin came up with the title to the song, yes. he looked up the duct tape entry on Wikipedia, which described it as And he decided to use that line in the bridge, and Robertson loved it. Yes. And the song just kind of went from there. Now, I went online... And I asked, the important question is, can duct tape really mend a broken heart? (laughs) On the dark web. (laughs) And believe it or not, there were actually some people that had asked this question in the past. And here were some of the answers that people had come up with. These were the helpful answers. If not duct tape, 
Try Crazy Glue. It was originally invented for open heart surgery. Now, I have to completely agree here because when I accidentally spilt some crazy glue on my eye, I had to go to the hospital and they said to me that not to worry too badly, just to continue blinking until it had fully dried because crazy glue on the eye actually, that one of the uses that they have for crazy glue is to actually seal up eyes when there's a tear in the <laughs> cornea. That's true. But Yeah, and, and battlefield uh, medicine, I believe, yeah. This this suture up wounds uh, on the on the go. Yeah, exactly, Aaron. Now the next one that was stated was staplers are known to work wonders. Wow, I don't know about that. I don't know if I'd be using a stapler on on my heart. Next person said, "Oh dear, duct tape is much too strong. The heart is very fragile when it's broken. You need something that'll come off easily. Painters tape has much weaker <laughs> adhesive. Duct tape is more useful binding someone to your hip." Um, the per- someone then responded to that one saying, um, what HMO is your cardiologist in? That'll be $80. I was just going to say, we're not medical doctors. Do not take our medical advice. Don't try <laughs> this at home. Yes, please consult a doctor or anywhere, really. I love the next answer, which was a holiday always worked for my wife, but I couldn't cope with the broken bank balance and ended up a heartless broken man. <laughs> Interesting response. Uh, I did like the next one, though. One simple word. Alcohol. (laughs) Obviously, a Bare Naked Ladies fan. Mm. Next person took it to a different level, and I'm a little worried for this person. Sure, take the offending person, duct tape them so they can't move or speak. Ship them in an oversized container with with air holes to a pre-selected area of the world far away from you. How hostile the natives may be to an outsider is up to you. Or just keep them locked up in your basement so they can't ever get away again. Now, I'm going to say, no, please, really. Abduction is not worth the jail time. Here it is. (laughs) Now, one person responded, time heals in due time. Relax and let go of the past. That's all you can do. I think what they meant to say was... All in good time. (laughs) Exactly, Aaron. (laughs) I was thinking it. Now, Aaron, I am looking forward to your part on this discussion. As most nice I am. But I have a specific question for you tonight. I want to hear your comparison between the verses and the bridge, because to me they sounded kind of similar. Uh, so I wanted to hear what your thoughts were on on the bridge and the verses. Yes, uh, to a certain extent. Uh, but what really interests me is the changes in the chorus in this tune. Uh, that's when I really started to really like this when I was hearing it. So I guess let's let's break it down. Break down, break down, break down. Aaron's gonna talk about chord structure and time. Bit doo doo doo. All right, duct tape heart was hmm. recorded at an interesting, odd time—not uh, time signature, pardon me. Tempo, 147 beats per minute. Very specific. A little bit of quirkiness there. I could, I could see them uh, going like, you know what? One more, <laughs> or one less. Key of G major. Now the verse goes from a G to a C add nine to an E minor seven, back to a C add nine, back to a G to a C add nine to an E minor seven to a D. <clears throat> so you get a one four seven four back and forth, then landing on the five or the fifth degree for the turnaround, which is not uncommon. But then it goes into what I would call a pre-chorus, uh, which goes to uh, the C chord, uh, the C add nine. And in the pre-chorus, it's pretty much like C add 9. I think it might kind of temporarily jump to a D and then goes back to a C add 9. Or you could probably, if you're recovering this, just play C add 9 for the entire pre-chorus. And then the chorus uh, goes from A minor to C add 9 to G to E minor 7. Now, I actually really, really like this. A minor, C add 9, G, and E minor 7 are all diatonic to the main key of the song, G major, of course. And they are, of course, also diatonic to its relative minor, E minor. That's how relative scales work. They have the same notes. However, they're all also diatonic to the A minor scale, which is the relative minor of C minor, uh, pardon me, C major. And uh, this is true because aside from the seventh degree of the scale, the F sharp, every note in G major or E minor is natural. 
So it shares a lot in common with the C scale. It's interesting because you're hammering really hard at the beginning of the chorus on that A minor, and it really kind of feels almost like a, a small key change. And it gives this kind of interesting feel to the chorus where it almost seems like it brightens up just a little bit. It might be like E minor Lydian, or maybe it's just kind of them suggesting A minor since the chorus starts on A minor and then uses the E, the fifth degree, as the turnaround. Um, but it's really cool. It's, I mean, there's nothing in that section that is outside of, of G major, which the song is written in. But just the way that they use the chords almost implies a key change, which is kind of interesting. It's a kind of, that's a real Beatles move right there, and I liked it a lot. That made me smile. And then as far as the bridge is concerned... The bridge is, it's like D to C add nine to D to C add nine, uh, which is very similar to the intro, which is G to C add nine to G to C add nine. So if G uh, is the key of the, of the song and D is the fifth degree, then you're going uh, from the fifth to the fourth to the fifth to the fourth in the bridge. Nothing outside or, or non-diatonic to the, the key and I would agree that the bridge is not something, there's nothing they do in the bridge that's so outside that it's like in your face, this is the bridge. It's not one of those early bare naked ladies bridges that we all love so much that are just really bombastic and dynamic and stand out. So I completely concur with your assessment there, Tracy, that, that there's a lot of similarity there. Um, but I actually really enjoyed that kind of subtly implied key change in the chorus. Um, and the kind of there's a nice uh, subtle quality to this song that really caught me. Um, it, it's not in your face about it, but it's not so simplistic. It's not so. I mean, I know that we've been kind of um, we've been kind of harsh on some of the the latter day VNL <laughs> stuff. Is sounding kind of uh, samey. Uh, that I did not really get that from this. I mean, certainly I I, I could tell it was latter day VNL, but I liked it a lot more than a lot of the the latter day VNL stuff that we've heard so far. Um, it just seems like a really heartfelt tune. I connected with it. You know, there wasn't anything, it wasn't life changing. You know I mean? This is not, uh, <laughs> this is not Brian Wilson, but it's a very, very good song. And I enjoyed it quite a lot. It's very poppy. It is. Oh, I forgot to mention the form. So you have the intro, which is G to C add nine, G to C add nine, back and forth. Your verse one, which is your A section, your pre-chorus, which is your B section, chorus, and then again, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus, and then outro. So you've got A, B, C, A, B, C, D, C, more or less, uh, which is slightly more complex than some of, again, uh, this is one of the songs of the latter day kind of songs that we've heard. Um, it, this one's, it, it's, again, it's not way out there. It, you know, it's funny because when I was thinking of how to rate this, I was comparing it to stuff like uh, Bag of Bones. And I was like, well, I love Bag of Bones because of how weird and out there it is. It's very eccentric. Certainly, this is not eccentric like that. But it also, it's more than just a basic pop rock song. There's a little something more there. And it's not, it's not crazy, but there's a little more to it. And I really liked it and I connected with it. How about you guys? I liked it. I, I agree. When I was sort of taken by the electronic sound right at the beginning, you know, it comes in hard and it's, it yeah. was very cool to hear. Um, going through the song, listening to it, it's, and I think it's from songs from this period. And I don't know I, if it's this partnership with, um, between Ed and Kevin, I, I forget his last name. Griffin. Griffin, Kevin Griffin. It's got that montage sound. Yeah. It was no, definitely, I all I could hear was montage, montage, montage. Um, but, but it's a great song to, I mean, it, it wasn't like a negative montage it was just like it sounds like a montage song but it was fun did they release a music video for this um i don't have a music video for it so i would say no. i could totally see hear this like in the back of a movie or something during a montage section you're 100 percent right or like an episode of an episode of friends yeah. or you know like chandler's moving into some place you know like it's something is happening you... it's definitely a sitcom song you say this, and like what what comes to mind for me is that movie Fifty First Dates, right. yep. where she yes. over and over again, like over like yes. time and time again, keeps rejecting him at the beginning, and yes. he's not letting it bother him. Like that would be you can't that. break my duct tape hurt exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a fun song. I love the key the electronic early eighties kind of sound, um, yeah. but it's it's I liked it. There is an official lyric video for this um, with a 
with a literal like a duct tape heart in the front of it. I'm watching it right now as we're going, and and it is. It's just a lyric video of just the lyrics and over this duct tape heart. Um, so it's not anything. It's an official video, so it's on the Bare Naked Ladies website, but it's not anything like spectacular. And they've had better lyric videos later uh, that we've already covered as well. I wouldn't, I'm not going to, I'll, I'll put it on there, but I'm not recommending anyone go out and kind of like look it up because it's not spectacular. Which is weird because this, like I said, was the second single that they released off this album. You'd think that this would be their, their video. It's interesting. This has a very, even though it's electronic, it's a heavy beat. Like you can hear it throughout the song. It's in there. It's driving the song. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's electronic drums, um, but it's got a good solid beat to it. It's definitely a solid song for sure. It's like yeah, yeah. My big thing is, it felt like it was missing. So I mean, it's got that sa- uh, sa- I don't know how to pronounce it. The Indian guitar. I can't think of it. Sa- Satter. No. Sitar. 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 Thank you, Sitar. I was like, I'm s- pronouncing Again. it wrong. I know. It, Beatles. I'm hearing end. Beatles influence. Yeah. I would have loved to have some George Harrison sitar playing in there. Yeah, and I liked it at the end. Like that was a neat little add-on that they seem to have there. Um, I like the woos that they have in the background, yes. like it, that '50s poppy yeah. type sound. But that I was just... a nice BNL touch, I thought. Yes. Yep, I agree. It's just I don't know. There's something. There's something that's missing. It's not Steven Page. <laughs> I did Sorry, not I, say that. I had a cough. I just had a cough. <laughs> I think there's... I've got that same cough, Aaron. <laughs> I think I've. But I've I've, I've also heard too. some good BNL without him. There's well, just, I think there's... this is one of those songs. I think this is good. I, w- I would say I don't. I don't know if I'd say it's great, but it's good. It's yeah. good. It's, this is. It's a well, solid we can, song. This is, like, like I, we just... I could hear myself. <clears throat> I see myself seeking this out to listen to again. It's a. It's a definitely a, a head nodder. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's definitely a good song. I just there's something. There's a void that's not. That's not covered, and I can't think of what it is. Like some songs, I can pick it out and say this would this could use this to make it better, and I can't think of what that would be in the song, but it just feels like there's something. You know who I don't feel in the song is Jim. I mean, I know he's there, but it's like you don't get his. This is like 100 percent maybe. Ed. Yes. Well, obviously, and also his collaboration. I mean, I think that this is a good collaboration, and those two should work together because they they do well together. And yeah, I definitely. Think Ed likes to collaborate. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I don't think he's yeah. But that might be yeah, it. Please go on the show. That that might be it. That might be the little pit piece that's not rising to the top in in this in this BNL stew. Is I can't hear Jim as well, and like Jim is a big essential piece of BNL for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that might be what it is. Interesting. I'm I'm curious. I think I might be rating this one higher than you, Tracy. I'm I'm very curious. You might. You might. Um, I like the lyrics in this song though. Like this is a fun song. In terms of lyrics, I like that he's talking about him never being torn apart again. It's a very empowering yep. song. Um, it's it's kind of a, a sweet and sour type song. It's almost like a good lemonade, um, and that it's just enough sour that that's there. But it's also very uplifting in that he's not going to let this person get through and tear him apart. He's he's got ways to keep himself and bring himself to, back together. And but it's also interesting that he keeps letting this person back in. And she does keep hurting him. He's got duct tape. He's taping himself back together. So it's not like she's not getting into the shield. It's just he's just continuing to repair and rebuild each time. I feel like the one thing that I didn't... The only thing I didn't like about the song lyrically was it's a very simple metaphor that I didn't feel like he took far enough. Like, he did that gym thing of keeping it very simple with the metaphor. I- I was going to say, I disagree with him not taking it far enough. I think he went too far with it. I think it would have been better. I think it would have been better because it was very on the nose. You know, it would have been better served by, I don't know, going up. Again, this is just a personal preference, but um, maybe veering off just a little well, bit in, into the realm of not being so on the nose with it. Yes, yes that, that's actually what I mean. Like, there's no storyline behind it to match the metaphor together and to make it blend is just all metaphor. I was going to say, I think we're like the three bears. Tracy thinks it's too much. Uh, (laughs) Tracy doesn't think it's enough. Aaron thinks it's too much. And I think it's just right. Like it's, 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 it's perfectly like my thought was it's total Ed 
word play but i will say it's almost kind of lazy like oh come on well, that's you, what i'm saying you can't like, it's tear like, huh. like we're all saying the same thing but we <laughs> are coming to different conclusions which is yeah. interesting like oh come on you can't tear me apart really <laughs> so i i really like tape. some of the lyrics you're here, trying to you know? tear like, down. yeah i like them too i agree yeah. but it's like F- fix the fender on the rover that was left on the moon is my favorite i line. love that line <laughs> I, I appreciate it because NASA, of course, used lots of duct tape for a lot of its missions. But one thing that I'm disappointed and surprised that he did not mention was that there is a specific duct tape that is rated for use in nuclear reactors oh. and nuclear power Ooh. plants. And they call it nuclear duct tape. And when I first heard it, I thought it was a joke, but it's apparently a thing. I would be <laughs> so in a band called Nuclear Kind of duct terrifying. Tape. Nuclear somewhere duct in the tape. nuclear, if you've got a nuclear power plant in your town, there's probably some duct tape holding something together in there. <laughs> <laughs> and you better get yourself some. I don't want to be up on, anywhere near right? a nuclear power plant held together with duct tape. <laughs> well, I don't think it's held together. But, yeah. uh, but I, I grew up on red green, so I firmly believe you can fix anything with the right amount of duct tape. It's true. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned the, the moon rover, though, because actually Ed was referencing a real event that happened. So NASA did use duct tape. To hold together a moon yeah. rover. Um, 1972, Cernan and Schmidt landed their Challenger module near the Sea of Serenity on the moon. And the dune buggy lost the fender. And then they put it back on with duct tape that they had under the seat. So it's an improvised repair. Crazy. I, I don't know. I don't have anyone here. I don't know. Maybe one of them were, were Mainers or, or like Canadian, like low, lower <laughs> Canadian type type thing yeah the red green show like i said that's that's canadian <laughs> classic right there and that's uh i love that we had, we here in maine were lucky we got a lot of canadian programming on our public broadcasting mm. yes so i we, saw we got to red green at that. um merrill auditorium oh, oh, oh wow. wow when was that uh probably about 10 years ago nice I'm not sure. But I, I don't know. There are times that I feel like Maine in, in many ways is almost like lower Canada more than it is than it is United States in some ways. It's the Florida of Canada. It is. <laughs> well, yeah. They come to Old Orchard Beach for vacation. <laughs> we just have so much influence that comes down out of Canada all the time. And I'm not complaining. I love it. All right. Well, it sounds like we all like this song. Let's uh, start taping this this together and uh, put some numbers to it. All right. So for ratings this week, since the song is duct tape heart, we're going to go with how many WD forties do you give this song? Because Ooh, I like that. <laughs> if you don't have, of course that is the, the counter to duct tape. It's if That's you right. have duct tape and you have WD 40, you can do anything. Your life, that... nothing can go wrong. You can gyber that. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> And for those who don't know what WD-40 is, it's a spray that you spray on things and you can get rust off of things. And I've fixed locks with it before. The lock on my car trunk wouldn't turn. So we sprayed some WD-40 in there. That baby wow. opened right up. It was awesome. Um, so- and for those of you who don't know what MacGyver is, I'm not talking about the new TV show that's a piece of crap. That's There's a new MacGyver? There is. It's a sin. There's a new Magnum PI too, and that's just not right. No, no. So sorry, I, I derailed us there. Let's put it back on the rails, duct tape it on there, and get it going. Okay, so um, I give this song. I liked it. I gave it three point. Oh, it's funny. Three point two five WD forties. I liked it. I almost gave it higher, and I might change my score next year when we do our review, um, but. I'm giving it a 3.25. So, Aaron, let's mm-hmm. go to you next, and uh, we'll see how you do. How many WD-40s do you give this song? Well, Michelle, uh, we're usually pretty close, the two of us. It's rare that we disagree uh, vehemently. Um, Except for I another gave, postcard. Well, it's funny <laughs> you mentioned that. I, I Because I gave... Duct tape heart, 3.35 nuclear WD 40s. Nice. (laughs) Um, I like it slightly less than another fourth card. I know you hate that song, but I I really do. I I like that song. It's fun, and it's just a fun little. 
which I gave 3.4 to. And I was like, you know, I like this song, but, you know, that song just a little more playful. And there's a little bit, you know, there's Stephen Page. I, I Partial, I guess. Um, but I like this song not quite as much as another postcode, but I like it slightly better than Bad Day in Canada Dry, which I gave a 3.32. So 3.35, I think, is right there in the middle. Nice. It's a very good song, very solid, as we said. Uh, certainly, not only would I not change the channel, I would, you know, actively seek this out. I could hear myself, uh, you know, obviously I just listened to it a bajillion times, but maybe a, a month or two down the road, I would be like, oh yeah, let's, let's, uh, if I create like a, a BNL playlist, it's probably going on there. Nice. I almost gave this a 3.33, so yeah. I feel like I kind of wish I had just because <laughs> of your score, but I'm going to stick to the 3.25. Um, okay. okay, Tracy, how many nuclear wd-40s that you give this song? <laughs> i give this 3.4 nuclear wd Ooh, wd-40s wow. um i don't like it quite as much as crazy like looking through it i was like ah, i can't i can't put it up there with crazy i just can't even though it was brought down by the ending on crazy i can't I can't put those two on the same level. Um, but I do like it more than I did I say that out loud. It's a very singable song. It's definitely a jam for, for the car. Um, you'll If you put it on, by the end of the song, you'll catch yourself singing the chorus with it. It's it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the bridge. We didn't talk much about the bridge this time, but I, even though it sounds a, very similar to the verses, I still really enjoy it. I love when they throw like long words in there and scientific words in there and they're having fun and kind of showing a little bit of how smart they are. I really enjoy it when they do that kind of stuff and, and they're just having fun with it. And it's just, a, it's a jam song and I, I seek it out. It's on my playlist. I listen to it. I love it. So definitely 3.4. I don't think we're usually this close in school. Oh, no. yeah. Interesting. Well, that brings it to a grand total of 3.33 interestingly enough so i'm kind of happy with that yeah, because that was kind it. of <laughs> that is where i wanted it so i'm i'm happy so that puts it right above angry people and right below boomerang so right between boomerang and angry people okay that Very sounds nice. about right yeah it works it's a fun song it's easy it's not taxing it doesn't expect anything of you except to enjoy it you know? No, easy yeah, is in a few weeks. If you're craving <laughs> nice, <laughs> if you're if you're craving a little BNL fix and you want something that doesn't demand a lot of you and it's a good solid song, go ahead and put on Duct Tape Heart. It's uh, it's very good. Agreed, Tracy. <laughs> what do you have for appearances for us? So going along with the the Land Rover line, uh, not Land Rover, the Moon Rover line. Um, Ed Robertson is friends with a very famous Canadian astronaut. Chris Hadfield. <clears throat> they wrote Chris, a... please come on the show. We would we love to have Chris on. Matter of fact, if he's you in know, space, Chris I would geek the hell out. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you happen to be in space at the time, that would totally be <gasps> wonderful with us. We would love that. <laughs> Live from the International Space Station. <laughs> they wrote a couple of songs together. One of the songs that they wrote together was called Jewel in the Night that Hadfield played while they were orbiting, while he was orbiting in the International Space Station. Is he the one that did um, Major Tom on the guitar? Yes, he did. <gasps> yes, Space he did. I love him. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's He did a lot of, he did a whole series of great YouTube videos uh, from ISS. He's got to come on our podcast. Oh, I, I hope so. That would be... We would love to have him. He's a, he's a personal hero. Holy moly. That would be amazing. So anyway, Ed's, Ed's response was, a, a, <laughs> or they said, uh, a really awesome moment for me was when Chris Hadfield dropped by the studio and we were working on this track. I was wondering if he'd pick up on the line in the bridge where I say, fix the fender on the rover that was left yeah. on the moon. I just sort of glanced at Chris and I saw his eyes light up. He said, I know <laughs> the guy who fixed the fender on the rover on the moon with duct tape. Great line. <laughs> so nice. I'm going to put that... Even though it's not BNL singing it, Ed helped to write the song and Chris sang it on on ISS. Uh, so that will be our our appearance nice. for this week. Sweet, very cool. Well, thank you guys so much. This is been... oh oh Tracy, are you okay there? You yeah. got a bit of a cough. I'm fine. <coughs> what what's uh, what's going on there? 
Uh, I oh, just bless I, you. I have some people coming over tomorrow, and I've just been cleaning, and it, it's just it's really dusty in this room. Oh, you got a lot of dust. You yeah. got some dust bunnies over Tons there. Tons of dust over here. I, I got to do a little bit more cleaning tonight. Uh, so it'll give me time to kind of figure out. Oh wait, oh next week's song is Dusty Room, so <laughs> we'll we'll review that one next week. <clears throat> that makes. You Perfect know, sense. you know who's groaning right now, listening to this. Everyone, Mill. That's a special shout out to Mill. Who, yes, hey, Mill. Who is especially not not shy about sharing their uh, disdain of Tracy's puns, which is hilarious. Hey, Shakespeare would have loved that. Sorry, Mill. <laughs> so join us All next right, week guys. for Dusty Rooms, and thanks. That was fun. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next week. Thanks. That was fun. Don't forget. No regrets. Except maybe.